This screencast is a follow-up to the Prisoner's Dilemma video that I had shown in the other screencast. And so what I wanted to do was kind of just break down what we call the payoff matrix. Um, in this case here, it was about the sentences of the prisoners. And just kind of um, show you how you can then figure out things like the dominant strategy and the Nash equilibrium. The Prisoner's Dilemma is in the oligopoly section because it leads into the whole idea of the Nash equilibrium and looking at the dominant strategy. I think one of the tricky things that students have is sometimes how to read what's going on here in this matrix. And so I thought maybe I would break it down for you. So if you're given a problem where it's with the commas, you'll know what to do in order to maybe set it up better. And then if it's given with the diagonal lines, then you'll be able to understand that also. So in this case here, this is the one from that video, and they gave it with the commas. And so what I did here was I put it in with these diagonal lines, okay? Ultimately, it would look like this, but I added some extra arrows here just to kind of show what numbers are going with what. So what you have here is the diagonal lines because this is dealing then with everything on the right side is dealing with prisoner B and everything on the left side is dealing with prisoner A. Sometimes you will have this shaded in with a different color and that will correspond what A is shaded in with. Um, sometimes the numbers might be that way. Other times everything might just be the white and the black and you're expected to be able to read it and understand it. So in this case here, what it's saying for this first box is that if prisoner A stays silent and prisoner B stays silent, then what you have is a one-year sentencing for each. For this one down here, if prisoner A confesses and prisoner B stays silent, prisoner A will end up with not going to jail at all and prisoner B will end up with going to jail for 10 years. I mean, think of it this way. These two prisoners are isolated, and basically the police are saying, look, we've got all this evidence, and if you tell us what is going on, then you are not going to have to go to jail, and the other person will. These, these prisoners, this is a one-time situation, and so it's a matter of can they trust each other, because ultimately it would be way better to just get a year than it would be to get 10 years, and... Um, this way then they both are able to get out instead of something bad happening to one person. And so if they could, they would say to each other, let's just stay silent, and if so, we get one year. But there is this push by the police, like, look, instead of staying silent like the other guy um, who will get 10 years, if you confess, you're going to walk away and not do anything. And they'll say, we've got all this evidence, we know what happened, we just need somebody to speak up. And if you don't, then I bet you the other guy will. And so if, they, um, if prisoner A stays silent, and um, they'll get 10 years if prisoner B confesses, because prisoner B will end up with nothing. If prisoner A confesses and prisoner B confesses, then they will both end up with five years. And so the questions are, well, what's the dominant strategy, meaning what's the best option regardless of what the other person does? Well, obviously, it would be to confess because they would get zero years. But then you have to look at this Nash equilibrium, which is, I don't know what the other person is going to do, so how best can I maximize my payoff? Or in this case here, what's the way I can get the best, um, the least amount of sentencing? So how you go about looking at this? If they ask a question about what's the dominant strategy, the dominant strategy for either is to confess. Because if they confess, then person A is going to end up with a zero years. And if um, the person B confesses, then they're going to end up with zero years. Because we're not talking about what about the other person. It's just about that individual. But what happens with the Nash equilibrium is, it's what is my best payoff when I have no idea of what to do? 
it's really difficult when you're just looking at these boxes in order to figure it out. And usually you're dealing outside of the prisoner's dilemma with what do you do with your pricing strategy in order to get the best payoff when you are trying to figure things out. And so one of the ways that I go about in solving this is I put X's in the box as I'm looking at the payoffs and the box that has two X's in it will end up being the Nash equilibrium, which is where they can maximize their payoff given the actions of the other person. So let's take a look at that. And if we look at this first um, box here and we look at uh, prisoner B, with prisoner B, if prisoner A stays silent, then the option that prisoner B has here is that they can either stay silent or prisoner B can confess. And so when you look here at what the different payoffs are with that, then it would be in the best option for prisoner B to confess because zero years is better than um, one year. If a prisoner A decides to confess, then the two options that B has is either to stay silent or to confess. They could either get 10 years or they could get 5 years. So it would be best for prisoner B then to confess. Well, now you need to look at then, well, based upon what prisoner B does, what is it that A should do? So we're looking at this left-hand side here. If prisoner B stays silent, prisoner A has the option to stay silent also, which would be to get one year, or they could confess, and then they would um, walk away. And so obviously it would be better for them to confess than it would be for them to stay silent. The other option that you have is that if prisoner B confesses, then prisoner A has the choice to either confess or excuse me, to stay silent or to confess. If they stay silent, then they'll get 10 years. If they confess, then they'll get five years. And so this is where it would be the better option for them to confess. So when you look at the payoff matrix and what is happening, the Nash equilibrium is the one box with two X's in it. And in this case here, it's confess and confess. Um, some of the different ways that you could have would be the pricing strategy would be low and high prices and low and high. And again, you look at the payoffs that go along with it and you would find then the box with the two X's is going to be the Nash equilibrium or again, the maximum payoff given the actions of the other. Once again, the thing to remember about the prisoner's dilemma is that this is a one-time situation between these two people. They have no idea what the other one is going to do. And so, obviously, if they cooperate, which would be to stay silent, that would be their best situation for the two of them if they agree on that. However, they have no idea what the other one is going to do. And so the non-cooperative equilibrium, or the Nash equilibrium, in this case here, is the one that we found by placing the X's in the box when you look at the strategies or the situations of what the other one is doing and what is the best strategy of that person based upon that.